Welcome back to another episode of the Stevie Weeby Show. This episode is brought to you by Scent Bird. Welcome back. The OG, the one and only, our very first guest on the Stevie Weeby Show. Welcome back, musician, composer, overall genius, Money Mark. here buddy right, give me a pound first oh my god I'm so glad to be here. I just want to let you know I want to thank you first of all I'm so glad I have to thank you because I want to let the viewers know Welcome. how this podcast even started oh, our wow. last Monchi show uh, we were on the plane back from uh, New York because we thought that was our last show, and you, right. you were saying, hey, Steve, you should plan on something now. Like, what are you planning on doing after this? And then I, and then I thought on the plane, and I go, oh, I should start a podcast. There you go. And then I turned around, and I go, Will you, would you be my first guest if I start a podcast? And, dude, you are, you are the very, you're at wow. the beginning, and now we're over 100 episodes wow. on this. To ke- just to give you reference... Money Mark was a part of the Beastie Boys, as uh, and along with all these other great groups. What's the one with David Byrne? That yeah, David in? Byrne, the Atomic Bomb Band, mm-hmm. and uh, the uh, Karen O group with yeah, the, uh, the the Psycho yeah. uh, tr- uh, Opera thing. Yeah, uh, Stop the Virgins. Yeah, and then, uh, you know many, 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 yeah, many, many whatever. others. Money basically. <laughs> this is the first Monchi album. He he produced. No, we did. produced it. We kinda, no, we, but we you did, did most of the music on it, it in Big it, Bear. We did it together, man. We and did Big it Bear. So I got to give you, give you props for that. That was a very good memory. That was fun. Did you? Uh, do you want to? Let's talk about that. I mean, I was. I'm comfortable with you now, but back then, I I just was getting to know you, and we were just w- explain where we're at in Big Bear and how we that were in came. Big Bear, California, mm-hmm. up in the mountains. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, and we and there was a house that uh, we took over, like the uh, uh, we rented this house and just brought a bunch of gear up there. And it was a we huge started with lodge. like a zero. We had zero recordings, and then we ended up with a whole whole album. <laughs> right? We, oh, we went bowling too. We went bowling. And, yeah. Uh, we shopped at Vons. Yeah, we went to Vons. We went. Oh bowling. no, there was some llamas. Oh yeah, there's a llama. Yeah, those are animals back there. Yeah, yeah. In the yeah. back, and I'd feed him. We'd feed him um like vegetables, carrots, and yeah. apples and shit. But he's like, the place where we're staying at. It was basically you could have held a whole summer camp for kids. It had it was one huge lodge, but then outside there was other like cabins and stuff with shower everything. It like you could have there was families that could have stayed there. Yeah, there's like probably some towns in this world that are smaller than that. Yeah, and then uh, remember, and then the hundreds came and did that documentary. Oh, that's right. So yeah. shout out, shout out to Bobby Hundreds. He's there you he's go. supposed to get on here soon. So man, where do I start with you? you? Your your history is so vast, and I just want you know because you've done so much just in the music, like yeah, I'm history. old. I'm old, but you don't look so, old, you know. <laughs> and your music is keeping you youthful. Is the are you working on you, you are you working on your solo? How's the solo? Yeah, I have album three coming? solo albums in the works. So one is like fast and hard, and the other one is kind of mellow, like songs, and the other one is like very weird, um, like weird. And then uh, what 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 label is, is going to put out? I actually these? don't know. I'll probably just do it myself. Yes. I'll do it myself. And then all of my old songs, yeah. I, I own all those copyrights. See, I was smart, and I own, I never gave anything away. So I own it now I own it all, so I, I'm putting that out and one label, Light in the Attic. 
you know that that's a very oh light in the attic that's Cheryl Silverstein too right light in the attic uh, uh, oh, I, oh, oh, it's like an old oh, the, children's the book. book. The yeah, book? the book. Yeah, it's an old children's book. But no, Light in the Attic was like this cat, uh, the Rodriguez cat. Oh, like, you, know, you know that uh, you guys South know. African, yeah. yeah, that. Yeah, 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 yeah he had yeah, like yeah. a song on that record uh, that was like an anthem in South Africa, and he didn't even know. And then these. Kids, oh, there's a documentary. Yeah, on and these it. kids yeah, made yeah, a documentary, yeah, yeah. and then they rediscovered him, and then so Light in the Attic put out that record. He's but they did some other stuff. Yeah, 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 searching for Sugar Man. Sh yeah, that's Sugar right. Sugar Man. In Sur search Sugar Man. And yeah. then um, uh, they got Sly Stone on that label, and they got um, like a bunch of people, man. It's 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 pretty incredible. Man, that's it's just. So I'm happy about that. I'm happy too. You remember we were in Hawaii for the Deltron thing, and we were on the beach, and you were playing me. The it was you were uh, five, seven songs in, and you're letting me listen on the phone. Oh, some of the, the yeah, songs I was working yeah, on? Yeah, some of the stuff you... You had, like, a surf jam on it. And you know what happens is, like, I make songs, and then uh, all of a sudden uh, some new songs come along, and those other ones get put in the back burner. So I don't know, you know. So so those are gone? Are you going to add those? Because so those are awesome songs you played for oh, me. Oh, thanks. Yeah, I don't yeah, even yeah. remember which ones they were, but, you know... Uh, we, yeah. You, you know, I guess... Just get what you get. That's yeah. All. Let's uh, let's bring it back to um, just how, like how did you? I don't know if I covered this, but how did you like get into music? Like how did you meet the Beasties and how did you meet Robert and well, Mario C and all them? Yeah. Well, I mean, uh, that's a long time ago, man. Yeah, that's yeah. A long time ago. But but ago. there's there's because I we still keep the Beastie Boys legacy alive here. You know, like there um, you go. See, there's yeah, yeah. Uh, Mike D right there. Yeah. Ad Rock. Ad Rock. Adam, Adam yeah. Yow, right there. So um, yeah. j just for the viewers, because a, a lot of them are um, uh, Beasties fans and you're fans of yours, uh, they, just, just to clarify some history, I think is, is fun for them to listen to. If Just maybe just like even if okay, it's a broad so I history. Started my, the, I started hanging out with them during Paul's Boutique. Yeah. And then um, uh, officially we made a record together, Check Your Head. And so out of that record came um, So What You Want. Um, so what, so what, so what you want? And they had a line about you. The, I'm the illest from here to Gardena. Oh, yeah, I'm the illest motherfucker from, from here, here to Gardena. Gardena. That's then, referring uh, to you. And then uh, in that song, um, Professor Booty, the... Um, it's a keep with money, Mark. You know, he ain't having it. Just give him some wood and yeah. he'll build you a cap in there. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, but yeah, the BC uh, boy experience, I mean, working with those guys was like, tremendous uh i have so much gratitude right there i probably said that last time because it's yeah just, it's everlasting so i mean they're probably the most uh, one of the most iconic oh, but groups since ever. we talked uh there was a there's a beastie boy book that came out that's right the cook so i'm in there some stories yeah uh, yeah uh, yeah yep. some of the stories what was it like when you first met those cats were they recording were they like finishing paul's boutique or did yeah, they have the extra that was right in the middle of paul's boutique and then you were doing cabinet work, right? Like at yeah, the I was house working or something. Yeah, I was uh, I was making cabinets. I had like a little cabinet business, mm -hmm. but I was also um, a set carpenter, and I was on this uh, the Hollywood Center uh, Studios lot, and Pee Wee Herman uh, was there mm -hmm. with the Playhouse, and occasionally I'd build stuff for the for the for that show. And, and other shows that were going on there. And so when you first met them, they didn't know you had this musical talent, right? Like you kind of kept that on the. Well, um, that that's kind of half the story. But yeah, you know, basically, I was wasn't hired as a musician. I was hired as a carpenter to help oh, build the studio and yeah, help build yeah, yeah. like record shelves and like whatever, you know. So when did you? When did they find out like your musical abilities? Like just the more you hung out with these yeah, guys, yeah, just like hanging out, like let's let's jam out. Well, I have some gear, and I brought some gear over. Like oh, that. from Gardena to there. Yeah, that's right. Were this? Were, were they living in the Hollywood Hills at the time? Um, I, um, a lot of times we would jam out at um, Horvitz's pad, and he was on Stanley, off of Sunset. Oh wow! Uh, between uh, like off a of Sunset, yeah, right over there. Yeah. Right now is. Um, uh, well, it used to be, uh, I guess Samuel French used to be there, and the old SAG office used to be there. Yeah, but yeah. But that's where we would hang out. Because check your head. I mean, just all their albums are so historic and so iconic. Like, what was the what was that process like, recording that specific album, Check yeah, Your Head? Yeah, that was a... Because that, that was, album is... You like that sick. record? Oh, God, yeah. Well, you know... You signed thing, Craig's copy, remember? 
Craig, you yeah. signed the copy. Um, the thing about that is, like, it took a long time to make that record because not just because we're getting to know each other, but also because mostly because we're trying to create uh, a syntax for how to make the record. Like, what kind of record is this going to be? You know? Yeah, 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 we're, yeah. All of us had so much. Uh, varied uh, influences. We listen to all kinds of music. Right, right, right. Country and rock and yeah. funk and and classical punk. and punk. Yeah, everything. Everything. Like. Yeah. So um, it was. I mean, that record could have been a quadruple <sighs> record or something. And uh, and there is actually tapes that are still there from sessions from that record that never but made the cut. Like yeah, like lots of there's lots of music. There's well, just lots like of music. just for all the records, there's like lots of music that's just. There. Just, just there. Yeah, just there, yeah. How long did it take you guys to finish that album? It took a minute because, like I said, we were trying to figure out a lot of things about it. And then when we started assembling it, you know, that's like, it, it was a little unheard of at the time, like to put a, a hardcore piece of music next to like uh, a, a organ instrumental and, yeah. you know, and then... S the, some of them have vocals and some don't, and so it was, um, it was, it was, it was a little wild to hear it. Yeah, yeah. But now it kind of holds up. Like when I hear it, it's now it sounds very modern, like that kind of like mixtapey kind of idea. Right. Um. And then who uh, was Mario? C when did Mario C and get involved with the project? Yeah, that's he. Uh, him and I were from day one. Um, check your head. Day one. Day one. So it was you, Mario, and the Beasties. That's right. Five, but in five of us. Five. That's it. Mix Master came after the fact. Uh, he, like he on was Hello in the Nasty. Live, he was in live shows, yeah. Right, right. Okay, so do you... Uh, it was Hurricane was... Yeah, Hurricane. Sorry, Hurricane, Hurricane was, was there, there. Then it was Mix Master. And I right, think yeah. mostly on Check Your Head, the, the turntable work is uh, mostly at um, Horvitz. Really? Yeah, Hurricane wasn't around for those sessions. But he came on when the live shows started, then he got called in for that. So Ad Rock did. Okay, hold up, hold up. Uh, now it's a time for our sponsor, Scentbird. Scentbird is a luxury fragrance subscription service for perfumes and colognes. Scentbird has more than 600 designer brands for you to choose from each month. Not sure what type of scent you're looking for? Sort and find your new fragrance by brand, style, occasion, season, and more. With Scentbird, you can have a great taste and mix up your fragrance routine without breaking the bank. Whether it's Versace, Gucci, Dolce & Gabbana, Scentbird.com keeps you smelling good month after month after month. My personal favorites, I like in no particular order. I like the Burberry. The Brit Rhythm smells fantastic. I like Clinique. I don't know if I'm saying that right, but Clinique Happy. I love. Dolce & Gabbana Intenso. Check that one out. You won't be disappointed. And Hugo Boss, just different. So check those out. Those are my favorite, but there are many, 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 many more. Go to scentbird.com slash Stevie. Use my code Stevie, S-T-E-E-B-E-E, -E -E -E, for 30% off your first month. Again, go to scentbird.com slash Stevie. Use my code S-T-E-E-B-E-E -E 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 for 30% off your first month. And with an exclusive offer just for our listeners, you can get 30% off your first month today. That's only $10 for your first fragrance. Again, and with an exclusive offer just for our listeners, that's you, hopefully, you could get 30% off your first month today. That's only $10 off your first fragrance. Again, I'm going to spell it out for you. That's S-C-E-N-T-B-I-R-D dot com slash S-T-E-E-B-E-E -E 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 for you to try your first perfume or cologne for just $10. Let me just do that one last time and I'll let you all go. Again, that's S C E N T B I R D dot com slash S T E E B E E for you to try your first perfume or cologne for just ten dollars. Sign up today. You won't be disappointed. Smell fresh like me. Mmm. 
And we're back. So Ad Rock did the the DJing and the mixing, like that. Yeah, I did a lot of that. Everybody did a lot, a lot of jobs. Oh my god, yeah, we all pitched in. Yeah, and then like, did you guys work at, during the like crazy hours? Like, how did like when did when did all the creativity come out? Well, there was uh, the the studio was actually this old ballroom on the second floor of this building in Atwater Village. We're, and yeah. that's Glendale Boulevard. Yes, 30, yes. 18 and a half, Glendale Boulevard. There was a like a <laughs> there was a like a gift shop below us. Yeah. And I, you know, literally there was like glass menagerie little figures in the window and on these glass shelves, so we could not make any sounds or else it would. Uh, oh, where you recorded your stuff, you couldn't make. Y- well. The owners of the shop were like, "You guys can't make sound until we close." So, so you had to wait till like we had to wait till six p.m. Oh, six p.m. So that was our hours. It was like six, six on, yeah, four in the morning till whenever. Yeah, damn. Well, you know, whenever the shop opened again. Man, well, I just want to let, I mean, just to let the viewers and listeners know that uh, Beastie Boys, Check Your Head, all of the Beasties albums are uh, historic, iconic, and they. They stand the test of time. They they'll never bore anyone. I mean, that's when you, you know you music. So? Come on, dude. Mm, okay. Yeah, it's like they, I mean, <laughs> what you do you know? think? You like those records, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. Craig, had, you signed. I don't know if you remember. You signed his copy. He yeah. had uh, yeah, yeah, check yeah, your head the, in the rap. Yeah. When yeah. you're here, you're our, my our first Watching guest. TV. Yeah. yeah. Man, yeah, I'm just so, so I'm I'm still like I know I've known you for a while now, but like the just the. The respect that I have for you is just cool, always, man. it's always, it's always, it's always there. Look, look I got this watch that says now. I like it. Okay. If someone well, asked me what time it is. Now. I'd say it's now. Yeah. <laughs> um, so do you remember, okay, you, the first show you did with them? And then we're going to go on to oh. some of the other projects you've done with, uh, um, you know, the other. First music, show I did endeavors. with them. I remember there was a show in San Francisco in mm-hmm. the hate. Uh, February of 90. 90. 92 I believe yes okay do you remember what was the vibe like and the I, actually I, actually I, I didn't play that show I was just hanging out but we all drove up and and believe it or not so what you want wasn't on the set list what until um, a couple of the shows later that I actually joined in on like those were only just rap shows but then when the band started playing then you know um, you know that that was the real show. Yeah. But um, they didn't add that song until, like, I think the manager called them and like said, "Hey, K Rock's playing that song like all the time. It's on heavy rotation. Yeah, heavy, heavy. Guys, Not only that, MTV, the video, dude. You gotta put it in your set list. Yeah. <laughs> like that. That's how it happened. Yeah, it's like that. That it's such an important album because not only musically it shaped the culture like um, of just fashion, like yeah, the beanie like, you're wearing and the flannels and the crazy shoes. It's like that was all Beastie Boys, right? Like, um, you know, uh, I was in the middle of it, so I didn't really get a um, like a peripheral yeah, because you're in it. View yeah, of like yeah, what you're was actually it. going on around. I didn't know what I didn't really know what other bands were doing and yeah so yeah it's like I was just right in the middle of it <laughs> that's so crazy it's it's because like people don't read like you're there though like throughout the whole time so let's go that to like like the end of like because they had a long ass run right I mean well how Adam, long was the run sad, for the Beastie sadly, Boys yes at um uh, um, Adam Yalkut um, discovered yeah. um, cancer. a sickness, yeah. his cancer, in uh, 2009, in the late summer, and then we lost Adam. Um, yeah, rest in peace, Adam Yalkut. May um, <coughs> 2012, I believe. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I don't know if you remember, but we're in Big Bear and. Uh, you said that you were you, the way you talked about. It, you said you were planning to go on tour with those guys. You're like, yeah, I was ready to well, go. Well, there was a big tour plan. Yeah, you know, and yeah. Then, uh, we had to um, hold off on that until, um, you know, until we had to figure sh- shit out. So, 
And then um, at the, um, it was May 4th. So it was like, I totally remember. It was like Star Wars Day, right? They call it May 4th. Yeah, 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 yeah. May the 4th. Um, and then, um, yeah, from that, from that moment on, you know, like I had to switch gears for, yeah. for, it took a while to like process all that. Even now today, it's like, yeah, strange. yeah. I mean, I'm sure it's difficult even today to, um, but so I just that, kind yeah. of had to like start, um, start doing stuff yeah and then, yeah and then um yeah i, I started uh, kind of started over yeah which, is, which was good for me really yeah i mean part of like just uh, for your sanity and just part of like yeah yeah, yeah to keep therapy things, yeah, and, yeah yeah just keep moving uh i don't know if you remember the night but there was one particular night it was you me and dave in the kitchen in uh <clears throat> big bear and you're drinking um a glass of wine and <laughs> you you drank one sip it was late it was like everyone else okay. went to bed and you you said and you were talking about this you you mentioned it and you go yeah if Ad, if adam was still here i wouldn't be here with you guys <laughs> <laughs> oh god <laughs> and, me and, Dave at oh, wow. each other. and we were just like <laughs> but you don't remember huh? But you were dead that. ass serious, and we like it was full yeah. on like just like we just That's it right. just uh, silenced the room. You're like, I wouldn't even be here with you guys right now. And then you put your wine glass down. <laughs> <laughs> oh, do you remember the wait, mouse, wait. the the mice in the oh, kitchen? Oh yeah, yeah. That's I think that was the night that I like I, I like I felt comfortable with you because we were like out to catch. There was a uh, at the oh, yeah. Big Bear uh, Lodge. There was, there was like there's mice running around, and we we're trying to set traps and stuff. To yeah. Catch them. Dave, I think, caught a mouse. Yeah. Oh, he did. He did. Yeah, he caught a mouse. You know, let's talk about that. Let's let's go on to let, let's go on to the trajectory because your, your trajectory is so it's so vast. I met you at DVD ASA. That's so right. So how did you let Let's go to Let's go to that now. How did you end? How did you meet Dave Dave Cho, wow. the Choster? Yeah. And then I want to get to the point where I like met met you when yeah. we met. Yeah. Well, how long is this show? Like right now. <laughs> oh, we're rolling. It, it yeah, I know, rolling. but yeah, like, yeah, you no. know. No, but no, it, as long as it takes. You know. Yeah, right Well, now. the quick, there's a quick story. And basically. Do the medium story. The medium story <laughs> is um, yeah. giant robot, Eric Nakamura. Sh- shout, this, out, uh, shout out to Eric. Yeah, Eric. Giant Robot is. Um, it's a culture magazine. Yeah, culture. Like, you know, Asian culture. Asian centric. Yeah. It wasn't just about Asian culture, but it was Asian centric. Pop. And culture, uh, yes, well, art. Yeah, that's they right. They have a store too, and on Sot- yeah, Sotel, they sold, I think. Uh, or, some, yeah. You know, there's a uh, the, the store is great. Yeah, there's a, um, a lot of art and pop art, and mm-hmm. um, there's some high high end stuff there too. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, but there's um, cool stuff there. Mm-hmm, anyway, mm-hmm. Um, and and the magazine uh, was um, I don't know, it was quarterly or something. And I was on the cover of one of the uh, issues, and was there, was Cho on the cover of one of the issues? Well, yeah. I don't know. Well, I know that it, Cho got some a part of his artistic start through Giant Robot. I yeah, don't know the right. de- I don't know the details. Well, though. yeah, Eric found his art. Right, and right, pro- right, right. Propped right. him up in the magazine. Yep, yep, yep. And then Eric and I eventually, um, uh, he um, Eric introduced us. You and Dave. That's right. And then what was that? For? <laughs> I'm and, just. Well, I'm curious. Yeah, what was I, that like? I, I didn't know who he was. He didn't, he didn't he knew who I was, I think, but I didn't really know who he was and I got that <laughs> little got that little uh fanzine thing and yeah. I was like, Well, this is kinda of dope. But then the second time we met again well, we met several times. What in year between, was this? What in between year? I don't even remember. Okay, okay. I don't remember. Maybe early two thousand. In between this whole time, um there was another um Okay, there you go. Yeah, there. Yeah. Oh, that's he was, cool. His art was on the cover, not, but not him. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's cool. Do you cool. want to show that to the camera real quick? Well, well we can, you can, prop, oh. you can yeah, we'll put it oh. in. Oh, okay. Oh, that's good thinking. There you go, Ren. Okay, you keep going. Wow. Yeah. You got, you got, a, you got a professional he's doing. He's, do, he's, the, he's doing Jamie uh, oh, yeah. on Joe okay. Rogan stuff. Uh, yeah. So then um, the second, uh, there was one time that Giant Robot had a, a museum show at the uh, Japanese National museum in little tokyo and he asked me to perform 
So I who perform, Dave or Eric? The, uh, no, Eric. Eric asked did. me to perform for the giant robot event. Uh huh. And I performed with, and Ashley uh, was my bass player. Yeah, they're all up there. Yeah. You're there. Ashley's there. Yeah. And then that's but she didn't meet Dave that night. Oh, she. But didn't. Dave was there, and then we reconnected. That's when we reconnected that night. Whoa. So whenever that that date was, and then um, um. Then he said, "Yeah, I got this warehouse, and you know, I'm doing art there." Yeah. And then, and then Koala Kid uh, Koala Kid. came to town. Yeah, shout out to Kid Koala. Kid Koala. Eric. Eric San. Yeah. And he called me. He goes, "Hey, man, I'm gonna go to Cho's warehouse. So let's let's go over there." So I went over there, and that's the first time I saw the warehouse. Yeah, yeah. What did it look like back then? Was it just art, mostly art pieces? And uh, the paint? warehouse is gigantic. Yeah. And I miss that um, thing. There was a lot of, you know, yeah. there was a. It was a kind of giant indoor playground. It mm -hmm. was, it was, uh, it was very. Um, uh, what do it I was, say? It was just open. It was just a place to cultivate your, Every, yeah, all of you your could artistic do, ideas. You could do anything there, yeah. Yeah, um, and eventually we started jamming out there. Mm -hmm. Well, just um, you and Dave, or you and Ashley? Or? We jammed out that night, actually. Who? That first who? night that Dave played drums and I played keyboards, and guitar or something yeah he, he had yeah. a bunch of instruments mm -hmm, laying mm -hmm. around there then um the podcast came later i don't when did the podcast start i was i came late i know but i came late the, i don't i was wait late. were you there w before ashley uh, after she was already I, yeah she was there like a month or two or three before me just like right almost at yeah the same it was time. on the cusp because i remember when i first saw her she'd bring in her bass guitar okay and that was when it was before it was in the og room right and then the that, room. that's crazy because I was there like maybe three months later. Okay. Yeah. We all kind of met at the same time. So I brought in Ashley. So you brought in. And then yeah. Dave brought you in. So. Or no, Bob brought me there and I sat on the side yeah, of the podcast. Yeah, but how did Bob get there through Dave? Yeah. Yeah. And then, but I, I just went to meet Dave. That's right. I went to just meet and show him respect and be like, hey, I'm, it's nice right. meeting you. And then Dave, you know how Dave is. He's yeah. like, hey, bring. Bring your chair over here to the mic, and then that's how. Oh yeah, and then that's how I met. So you basically, guys. I think I I had been thinking about this, you know, a, a long time ago, but I didn't yeah. think of even recently. Like, this is a band that was like, kind of formed, um, on, on a podcast. Like yeah, you the audience, that, yeah, got to if you followed it, you got to hear and experience how this thing started and then it turned into this thing yeah, and then turned a into tour this, and yeah yeah and and more more yeah yeah and we did all these different shows yeah james jean I mean, yeah. this is uh, james jean's art here that's what was so cool that's why i'm like proud to be a part of it i was always proud because of the art involved because it wasn't just with you guys it was so many cool artists like remember the tour like each tour we went on had a different artist do right you know do you remember that poster. yeah yeah so and then um yeah and uh, then the there's videos a, yeah there's it was yeah, cool yeah really cool stuff i'm just so lucky to be a part of this look money more all over man. there it's like, it's like so how did cool. like do you remember i mean um try to refresh my memory do you remember um when who came up with the idea hey let's let's record something or let's go somewhere and try to record that something. was definitely dave so it was during a podcast, right? Yeah, actually, I was off to, I was off um, when he asked me, I was like, well, I'm going to New York City to produce this band. What project was that? I forgot. I don't even remember now. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. Because you worked with so many happen. musicians. Yeah. Um, they were like an unknown band, but they wanted me to do it. And yeah. Then, um, I didn't actually fully agree to it, but... Um, and Dave was like, well, let's, you know, this, this is going to be fun. We're going to just go to Big Bear. I was like, okay, I just changed gears. Yeah. And we did that. I just remember like what you brought on one of the trips. You had this crazy, oh, we're going to talk about, get to that keyboard. But the keyboard you brought to Big Bear was this. Yeah, like well, a big it was, giant. It was a big black keyboard, but it had all the sound. Yeah, like, just, oh, yeah, like yeah. It's just some, it's like some, it's a Korg company made the uh, Korg used to give yeah, me Korg, keyboard, yeah. yeah so you had a and Korg. I had Korg and it had a bunch of sounds in it it was but, I mean it's like it, it's not any different than other 
um, kind of those workstation keyboards. Yeah. But it had a bunch of sounds in it and a computer in it. Mm -hmm. and like, but, um, I mean, we used it. So Dude, fine, but you, I had a guitar up, yeah. and a amp, and you bought your SP twelve hundred. Yeah, I brought my sampler, and then uh, you brought in a laptop to record. I remember and a laptop. We did it all. And you had a, you had like a older version of Pro Tools on yeah, it, and you're like, hey, old, this is all yeah. we need. Yep. Yeah. Do you remember how did we be? Yeah, a few mic. How, how did we begin even recording song? I I don't really remember. It was a while ago. Did we? I don't well, I don't think happened. any. I don't think anybody really knew how. I mean, I was the only one who knew how to like uh, technically yeah. do it. Obviously, yeah. But then you know, I was just waiting, picking up ideas from everybody, mm -hmm. you know, and trying to put it into a you know a little form. I know that these are my people. You get you you talk to me. I was washing dishes. Oh, cool. And then you're. I remember this night, and you go, "Oh, you should do a thing where you get abducted by aliens." Oh, okay. And then, and then I go, "Oh, that's a cool idea." And then you're like, "Hey, look, I'll make." And I remember you did. I remember exactly. You had your SP12, right. and you had a certain trick where you put a, a speaker a certain way, so it like had the 808 like oh yeah kick sound. Right. Yeah, it was like boom. Boom, boom, right. boom, yeah. boom, and I'm like, and that I remember that 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 was inspired by you're like just kind of right just but uh i mean to your credit like you were just willing to go and like it was, try something try something so that's great well you, i remember that's your style like yeah you're just try it. well i try remember it. you and david did a uh like um a pep talk with me one night <laughs> and you it was just us three again and you go steve you have to because i you know i just like was into underground hip-hop and you're like you have to be open to other styles of music steve we want to experiment and and then after that that's when we did all the punk songs and I, I don't know if i said that exactly but i did say that you know i think that i a lot of times people have the idea when you're make, making music like uh to, like you're holding back but it's all like no one's going to hear any of this shit until it's right so it's might right. as well just like go for experiment. it experiment yeah, yeah just yeah, go yeah, for yeah. it and laugh and cry and do whatever yeah and get it out there and then make room for more ideas to come in that's the thing like so purge purge and then okay now some original shit starts to happen yeah, that's just yeah, how yeah. It, life is anyway if you just like um you know um circle around feedback around the same idea and then, it gets you know. it gets kind of yeah, uh, you're, redundant. You're, you're, you're done. You're yeah, done. Yeah, you got to keep moving. Keep your you mind. You know, that's open. an interesting kind of point you brought up there because that's how like as far as humans as well. It's like yeah, we have to learn how to adapt and do evolve and try new things. Yeah, and that basically that's the way I look at you, man. Because you're constantly like every time you have a new piece of gear or a new keyboard or new and like your inventions i want to get to your inventions because you invent shit you know what i'm saying like yeah i didn't i you know i couldn't bring you it couldn't here, bring it but here. let's talk about we'll get to that but when we we're at eddie's yeah if you guys are going to put inserts i'll yeah. send you some photos yeah 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 like Jack, let's talk about yeah. your drum machine that you created okay yeah yeah yeah, like, yeah yeah because yeah. so this guy invents so i was thinking things. that i was looking at uh around at um I, I look at kids and I see young kids, um, um, the opportunities that young kids have, like sometimes it's, um, you you have a situation and it's not very good and your opportunity is very limited. So I thought that I would make music toys that would like be for everybody. And I like the idea of uh, very young ages, like zero to five, where um, these negative biases can develop. Or it's like when you're just like a sponge. You're a human. You're just born. Mm -hmm. And um, so I, I just thought that that was a kind of a neglected age. So I started making these music toys for that age. That's so sick. And so yeah. I made this little drum machine. It, it for like little to babies. It try to describe it to the viewers. And yeah, listeners. it's very simple. It's not like so. Then I did a survey of music toys around like these big companies. Mm -hmm. I won't name them, but and a lot of those music toys were just not good. They mm -hmm. have like buttons and you push them and it does all its stuff on its own. Like yeah. there's no creativity there. So the little machines that I make for the kids, they're very simple. But you actually have to like pu play, push these little buttons and play sounds, 
and then um, eventually, and, and it's all pared down. It's very simple. There's like only two or three sounds on each thing. So I got the idea from um, this kindergarten, uh, the guy invented kindergarten, Forbel. Forbel made these toys called Forbel Gifts. And I was just, those are kind of my, I, my version of music, uh, music toys, uh, like the Forbel toys. But anyway, yeah. So yeah. then, I thought that when a kid hits a, a like even on your phone when you hit a, a button and it makes a sound, boom. Yeah. That it's like it's kind of magical in a way because you just hear like this awesome sound, but you don't really see anything moving. So I made this extension where things move. So this little drum machine has a little hi hi hat button, yeah. and a snare button, and a k kick drum button. And when you hit them over the, here, this little this little thing over a contraption over here actually moves to the to uh to, to his the, hit. yeah to yeah his when touch. you when you touch it yeah then those things move so you can connect you know the sound to like actual movement yeah and that inspires um a uh, person to like actually move those things too but anyway that's one of the ideas so uh, that's still like kind of developing right now yeah, but then you even brought it to a different level because you even learned how to program. Yeah, then now you, you program yeah, to certain you can patterns, program beats dude. In it. I so, remember that night. So the equity involved here is like you can either play it, but not everyone's going to be good at playing it. Yeah. So you can program it. So there's another little piece that goes with it, and you can put these little, um, um, these little little coin type things in these slots, and you can see a beat, and then you push play, and the beat will play too. So even at zero to five. You can program you basically computing. Like <laughs> like when you're it's like a little baby. Yeah, yeah, it's like, yeah. but it's, it's like, it's under wraps it's, it, it, right it now. Of, uh, it's under wraps, yeah. It's, yeah, but it's, because it's, it's your it's idea. Progressing. As well. It's yeah. progressing fast. Like, yeah. it's almost finished, actually. Yeah. 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 And so when that thing is ready to. Uh... Some of these things in the background, is that some of your... No, that's a gallery that. Yeah, yeah I, I was just using for that. Demo. But yeah, we're just kind of keeping under wraps because it is your, you know, it, it's your. Oh it's no, your, man! Yeah, That's yeah. A, hey, I want I want other people to make stuff. Yeah, too. yeah, yeah. So, but uh, that th that one specifically is uh, yeah, it's signature by your uh, with your uh, with your I was signature. Ask a question too, Money. You had said that like you know you made a good point about like a lot of songs that you guys recorded were like you know never put on albums. Yeah, yeah. Did you ever feel like some some great songs that were just never placed? Yeah, well, so I, saying I, I wasn't the executive on this, those decisions, so I was just like going along with it. But there was some good stuff that could have made it. Well, the Beasties? There was already 24 songs oh. on the yeah. Check Your Head record. Right. Much more than a normal size record. You mm -hmm, know? Mm -hmm. I mean, just when you're doing music in general, does a lot of stuff hit the cutting room floor that you, you wish you had put in? Well, not every, uh, like, the, the, the point of it is to make an album, and not every song is going to fit in the sequence sometimes that song is just sticks out too much and it does not become a family of that sequence of songs so it even could be a great song but it's just not fitting in with that collection at that moment so, right you know, right 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 it, it, it gets put somewhere else you know is there a possibility one day that maybe you guys could archive it to the public somehow like well i thought like in my hands streaming or yeah it's or not, is, it, is there too much copyright or i don't know it's not in my or? hands i just um uh, you know i don't know exactly even where it all lives yeah but um i heard what about what five months ago the, a whole two hours of some Radiohead demos were like put out in the public. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then, since you brought up Radiohead, because you, as far as your collaborations and the work you've done, like, let's talk about some of the collabs you've done. And you mentioned David Byrne from Talking Heads. Let's talk about in Karen O. Let's let's talk about some of those things because I think I want people would like. Yeah, to Yeah, well, hear the about next that. thing I'm doing is probably you know is, is in talks right now, and, and I, I we've met about it and you know discussed it init uh, initially. Is this um, working with Jack White on these um, piano rolls? I've been getting piano rolls, and archiving these piano rolls. I made this machine that will play piano rolls, and play wow, them through dude. synthesizers. So it's like a hundred-year-old music can be played through. Um, we're gonna bring it back to life. So you know, and it's right up his alley. Head. Like yeah. he's a. Uh, He's uh, also, he's got that same kind of kitty mind. And also, who, who, who like, Jack? Yeah, Jack. Oh, do you White. guys, aren't you on the softball team together? Um, 
I'm not on his team, but okay. I play against him. Oh, you play against him? Yeah. <laughs> Okay, okay, okay. Him. It's not softball, yeah. it's hardball, yeah. How did you and Jack uh, White from uh, White Stripes meet? Uh, how did you? We were back in... Um, Shout out to Jack White from White Stripes. Yeah, there you yeah, go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And Meg, too. And Meg, yeah. No, we met Jack and Meg on tours. Yeah, on backstage, tours. like at yeah. festivals. And it just clicked his personality and you're, you guys got along? Well, I, I, we were just kind of... Crossing passing, paths. Crossing, crossing paths. paths crossing mm-hmm. paths. And it, the recent band he's in now... Well, this is so. This is um, you know, end of summer, two thousand nineteen. Mm-hmm. Uh, the Rock and Tours just had a number one album, wow. and I had been making some recordings with Patrick Keeler, the drummer. Yeah. And actually, in the Karen O band, um, it was Patrick Keeler was the drummer, and yeah. Jack Lawrence, the bass player of the Rock and Tours, he was the bass player, and I was the keyboard player, and um, and um. Uh, Nick Zinner was in yeah. playing guitar, and Brian was also playing percussion and drums. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So it was basically the yeah, yeah, yeahs and some of the rock and tours, and then I was in there playing wow, keyboards. Wow, that's so cool. So that band was really cool. Yeah, that's we went cool, to, man. We did the uh, we played at um, at this at the Opera House in si- wow, Sydney Opera House. Sydney Opera House. Couple weeks. Yeah, around yeah, there. no, dude. And then in New York, respect, we played some shows respect. There. That was fun. They have no idea. I mean, we could go five hours with this guy. I want to bring up a couple other bullet points. One personally, because I think it's interesting, because uh, we did a show, Manchi, we did a show uh, D- that Die Antwort, we opened for Die Antwort. Oh, yeah, that's right. Do you remember that? In, but uh, you, ho- yeah. in Hawaii. In Hawaii. But then you have a story of you actually flying to South Africa, and you stayed yeah. with it. Can we talk a little bit about that? It's interesting uh, to me. Well, <laughs> um, well, I just have lots of curiosity about how to make songs and yeah. how music's made, and, <laughs> and I was listening to the music, and I was like, and, and then I actually met them. Who, Ninja and uh, I met, Yolandi. Uh, High yeah. Tech and, and Ninja and Yolandi. And Yolandi, yeah. And I, as, when I was talking to them, yeah. they, they, don't, they don't know the things I know about music, and I don't know the things that, that they, they know? know about how to make music. It's completely alien to me. Like, well, give me an what, example of what that. What I know about music you know, comes from kind of a tradition. Yeah, And yeah. what they know about music and how to make music is some other comes from somewhere else that was so uh, interested in that idea so i told ninja i said hey i'm gonna fly <clears throat> to uh, south africa johannesburg and uh hang out with you guys if you don't mind just yeah come on. so i flew over there and stayed like uh i actually stayed like six weeks you stayed six the, weeks yeah i stayed there for six weeks what was it like there um wow that's a whole nother just give me a small description. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that you know, was my like brother, being on yeah. another planet, too. Because my brother got mugged there. You know, Bob got mugged. Oh, wow, that's too bad. He got robbed there. They took his wallet. Oh. Yeah. Well, that happened to me in, in, in Belgium, so. Wait, on a okay. music festival or like yeah, some well, kind of tour? a long time ago. Oh, okay. Yeah, some festival. So in the but, 60s, you know, it's yeah, like, yeah. But uh, I had fun out there, and, uh, you know, I was uh, Joe Bird. Okay. Yeah, Johannesburg. <laughs> Red, we get it. We get it. Yeah. yeah. All right. People get this. And yeah. a Cape Town. And uh, anyway, I learned how how they operate. And it's very yeah. You know, it's cool. What was like a couple of things you noticed about like their music creation and how they they vibe and everything? I'm just curious. Well, do they just uh, sit around? They don't use uh, you know. There's no terminology that I could understand. Oh, they use like slang from South African. No, slang no, no. no I don't mean that. I just mean you know like they were just like oh. It's a lot of, it's a lot of like uh, emotional decision making. Like, oh, I really love that sound, or I really like that part, like that. There's no like, oh, that F seven major goes into that B flat really nicely. You know? Oh Nothing yeah, like yeah. That, it's just so. they're going on like feeling and yeah, yeah, exactly. yeah. So wow, that's amazing. Um, damn, it's already. We're gonna we're gonna just we we, we have some time. I didn't want to. I, you know what I just thought with you? Because with you, we could go like 20 hours with you. But <laughs> So I want to even do more content with you specifically um, just just so like viewers could get like like maybe well, like your... Well, st- another time you can come to the studio. Yeah, that's there. what I'm saying. Or maybe you can do see a me vlog, build, build something Build scratch, something, but not only like, that, yeah. all the gear that you... Like all the keyboards. Yeah, but it's like, and, you know, all that gear is just like you can buy all that shit. But like... I'm, I'm just... Be able just, to like operate it and stories of how... It, like I just to like a I tour of your your, like your 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 creative that, like, environment I think would be I interesting. I totally like man. take this whole thing apart, yeah. put it back together, and I know all about it. Yeah, like, it's uh, 
It's my expertise. Oh, of course. So what what piece of gear well, did you bring? Well, when you asked me, you said bring a keyboard. Yeah, or I just something. thought it'd be it's interesting because like... your keyboard money mark that you you know <laughs> you know you know keyboards. So well, what, this, what what do you got there? Mini, this is a mini Moog. Mm-hmm. And um, let me let me turn. Yeah, let me, yeah, let me yeah. Turn yeah. Go ahead. Do your like thing. Do your watch. thing. Sorry. Craig, you got you got it. Yeah, like Craig, this. you're good. Let's see the chair, right? Yeah. There you go. Okay. Look. You see? Yeah. That's a mini Moog right there. Yeah. And. I thought that when you said bring bring a keyboard, it's like <clears throat> this is a keyboard that, um, in, in my opinion, it, this is my friend right here. Oh, damn right. And I think uh, I'll take this to the grave with me. Well, if I had to go to mm-hmm. a desert island, this is the that's one the would, one you'd bring. That's the one I would choose. Why does the, wh- how because does it, how is that different than because the other ones? When Bob, when Doctor Robert Moog made this thing. His idea was like this is a machine that ha- is a, is a sentient being, just like a human being. Damn. It has a heart and soul and in it in it. So like right now, it, give give us some examples. Okay, so this thing now because it's my friend, I know all of this like. I, what do you it's mean just you know? So all intuitive, of it. like oh. I can just start to just do stuff. And someone can be over there, like do that. Like I can do, or if a band can be playing, and then sure, I'll just join in right now. Yeah, you know, Craig, instantly. can you hand me my phone as well? Because I want to, I want to capture some of these sounds too. Because he's about to do some crazy shit right now. Okay, hold so on, hold on. A, yeah, just give me some. There's an amp. Yeah. An amp and, uh, look. Yeah. Yeah, Mark. Mark, you just do you. I don't want to uh, disturb the neighbors. But no, you're fine. Okay, no, so, no, you're fine. So it it does. Uh, it, it's it's a whole orchestra right here so it does really low sounds yeah 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 and yeah. It does super high sounds okay. like does low sounds so low you can't even hear them mm-hmm. and it does high sounds so high you can't even hear them but so here's some sounds you can hear whoa that's a little thing oh so you know when i hit it it's like yeah. Uh, I'm gonna make it so short. Watch. So then it sounds more like a rock hitting something. I'll open it up. But I can do it. Keep, I can do, keep going on that. I can do it. Keep going on that. Yeah, it can just last forever. Then Wait, can, now I can change the, that. There's like these uh, ADSR things. Here. Yeah, 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 yeah. But now, now since it's lasting a long time, like it'll last forever. It'll hold it. I can change the filter as it's. was crazy mark what was that noise you sound like a firecracker so i can do the same thing watch i can make it long and short same thing What's 
what's what's the oscill what's the oscillator about? Okay, so there's here's oscillators, mixers. There's three oscillators yeah. here, and a mixer, and here's how how you change all the sounds. Yeah. That, that's basically how it is. So like yeah. you turn on, I'll just turn on this one oscillator right here. Yeah. And here's a, the low. It's so low you can't even hear. Yeah. It. Okay. So watch. The reason why I record him, anytime he's doing something, it's gold. That's why I have to, you know what I'm saying? do more parts with you mark dude that i feel like an hour just flew by with you <laughs> we didn't even we just barely scratched the I surface I with my, you uh, i didn't get my um corn nuts or my um uh, ginger ale oh did you want to do you want a sparkling water i have sparkling yeah, I'll, I'll get i'll get one water. sorry about that well oh my god what are you talking about there's like Money Mark, Money Mark. Thank Cop you, thank the you. let's um let's start promoting your stuff when wh uh, when your album comes out. Well, first of all, your social media, your Instagram. Let's uh let's uh let, let's uh so people could um start following you and uh, your I music. Really yeah, I only have some Instagram. I have less than a hundred posts on Instagram, but but it's about well, people get like it's oh, a Money Mark official at this point, and I'm uh, I'm at at Money Mark on uh, Twitter. So it's Money Mark official yeah. on Instagram, and then your Twitter again is Money Mark. Is Money Mark website? Yeah. MoneyMark.com. MoneyMark.com. And when's the albums coming out? The three? Um, right now, <laughs> the f the f fast record I just recorded with John Theodore playing drums, so I'm working on that right now. And then um, I don't know. So, uh, uh, as soon as I finish it, mm -hmm. 
which is I got to finish it in the next six months. So so it's gonna come out yeah before, in the next in, within this year by within summer, yeah, yeah by summer. Yeah. Okay, and then yeah, man, dude, that was awesome. Yeah, you're if, welcome. Yeah, are there any yeah, more the collaborations the, going yeah, on, this thing Mark? With Jack, Jack White. You guys got a project together? Yeah, that piano roll thing. Yep, and yep. Then, uh, also, um, they're um, um, collaborating with um, right now in David Burns' current band. Uh, he's doing the American uh, Utopia, which is like a Broadway. Now it turned into like a Broadway wow, show. Dude. And a couple guys, uh, amazing Brazilian players who mm. play in that band. Yeah. Stefani and Mauro Fresco. The, um, we're starting a band. You know, it's Electro Kumba band. We're going to go to Brazil. And That's record crazy. And yeah. play shows there. And then, um, um, let's see. The um, I'm playing with this Mexican band, Molotov. Dope. Playing, um, you know this band, Molotov? So, um, playing Molotov. some... Sh- some um, Unplugged shows like <clears throat> MTV is still kind of big in Latin American countries, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. so they did this unplugged show that I was part of. Yeah, so I dope. do those shows every now and then. Mm-hmm. And um, what was coming up soon? Uh, boy, I uh, produced um, Tunde, who is the singer from uh, TV on the radio. I produced a record for him. Uh-huh. Um, is that out? Where, where can people just, hear? I think it just came out. So where can people find that? Just I don't even know. <laughs> I don't know. You do so much stuff. It's just your stuff spread uh, out. And Mia so. Doi Todd, I'm uh-huh. helping her make her uh, new record. Uh, this amazing singer, um, LA singer, and then um, who's a good friend of mine. And uh, and boy, I don't know. Tonight I was just like I, I've been hanging out with like trying to hang out with n- the younger bands and new bands. I was um, just before I came here. I was actually with. Uh, this band, Black Midi, they're a UK band. Some young kids are like 23, 22 mm-hmm, mm-hmm. years old. How'd you meet them? Uh, I met them through a friend uh, who is putting out the record, uh, a Rough Trade. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And it turns out that uh, my my nephew uh, knows them. Who who He's in the UK. His name is Elijah. Mm-hmm. And uh, he's um, plays guitar, and he knows them. Mm-hmm, um, mm-hmm. Morgan, who plays drums in that band. They're a great band. I'm, I'm actually going to go see them tonight. Cool. Um, and I, I mean, when you ask me that, I can't even think of all the stuff I'm doing. It's like there's just it's like too stuff. much stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like yeah. I'm gonna score a, a movie. Uh, I'm scoring a movie. The you know uh, Hannah's movie. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but then you score other. You you scored something else. I did too. Uh, um, David Chang's. Um, David Chang's uh, uh, show Ugly on Netflix. Yeah, on I did Netflix. all eight episodes there. Yeah. And um, uh, it's. I don't know. Endless, man. Yeah, I, I remember like, you. Yeah, I remember you, you working on that. Yeah. Before yeah. even it came out on Netflix. Oh, okay. But now it's on Netflix. They so could go watch that right now. Uh, Money Mark did all the music for that. Dude, it's always an honor to have you, brother. All oh, right, Fuck let's it. shake hands on that one. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, guys. Um, Thank you, out there. Yeah. Make I, I sure mean, I, to I, make sure to support this man's music when yeah. it comes out. Support him when he's out performing and all of anything he does. Support it. Buy it. And that's it, yeah. Um, we have a few remaining announcements. Uh, we have a Patreon attached to the. Oh, shout out again to to our sponsor, Scentbird, for sponsoring this particular episode. Thank you for that. Uh, shout out to. Um, if you want to support the Stevie Weeby show, go to patreon.com slash Stevie Weeby. Our new patron for this week is M. Clark33. Welcome. Um, there's a website now for the this everything surrounding this show. It's uh, stevieweebyshow.com. Uh, the Instagram's Instagram slash Q-U-A-N-G-O-U. Go to stevieweebybandcamp.com. Uh, more content on the way. Vlogs, puzzles, clips, street, uh, Stevie on the Streety, and a P.O. Box video. I got to stop by the P.O. Box actually tomorrow to check the P.O. Oh, Box. Wow. If you want to send any packages, send your packages to 1425 North Cherokee Avenue. P.O. Box 1391, L.A., California, 90093. I still want to do that vlog at your studio. I think it'd be good, man. Yeah, I mean, maybe, tie, maybe tying into this. Yeah, and then if, if you guys have any questions, send him questions. Yeah, and, and then I'll I could, yeah, the like a tour, just because he has, there's so much history with him and his gear and, and all this stuff. Maybe we do a contest, I'll give a free uh, uh, lesson. 
to some Yeah. Will we'll you do that? that? Yeah. A free lesson to yeah, someone in a, LA or something? I'll give uh, an hour of, of free lesson. Like a yeah. free keyboard lesson? Yeah. Oh, okay. Or, we'll, you know, whatever, we'll work like something like, out uh, like that. Yeah. How to make scrambled eggs. Yeah, whatever. yeah. <laughs> All right, so I wanted to shout out um, some of the homies podcasts. Losco Project, support that. Necro Electric Podcast, support that. Riffin with Griffin and WFE. And yeah, and thanks for tuning in. Tuning in. And man, Money Mark, give me a pound. Okay. You want to play us out, Money? Yeah, play us out. Sure. We're now it's time for Little Ray's World. Kids' minds must grow. I got abducted by some aliens and dropped in snow. Whoa. Stuck into a world that I do not know. So join me in adventures now. And I promise not to have a cow. My name is Little Ray. Hey, hey. My name is Little Ray, hey, 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 so welcome to my world, to all the boys and girls. Welcome to Little Ray's world, hee-haw! Well, what the hell do we got here, babe? Looks like a god dang cassette tape, man. Hello? Can you talk? <clears throat> Let me see if I heard that correctly, sir. Your name is Mech the Cassette, and through technology, you slowly got replaced by CDs, MP3s, and then streaming took over like Spotify, and you know what, sir? Even vinyl is more important than you. Do you hear me? Yeah. God dang it, I miss my old Elvis Presley records back there in Bryan, Texas. I wish I could listen to them right now. I don't know what to do to make you feel better, sir, but me and Beep wrote a song about you, and it goes like this, my man. This one's called Met the Cassette Man. Mac is a cassette played on a tape that was placed by a CD to MP3. How'd you get left like a T-Rex in the sunset wet? They threw you in the ocean to forget how you flex. Kids would look at you like a dinosaur pack man. No disrespect to the one named Mac taken over by a stream. What the hell did you expect when technology surpassed you? They said next, forgotten like the Aztecs. You're in the past. Join us in about two weeks or so for another episode of Little Ray's World, man. Make sure you go to www.stebyweebyshow.com and check out some of that awesome merch. Let's get her done.